Hey, when you think about your assets, what is the largest one single asset that you own? Most people are saying their home, but do you have a strategy to utilize that asset in retirement? Joe Anderson here, certified financial planner, president of Peer Financial Advisors. And I'm with the CPA extraordinaire, Big Al Clopine. Hello, Big Al. How are you doing, Joe? Doing real good. We're going to talk about home equity. I like it. One of my favorite topics. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and we are not experts. We're not mortgage brokers. We are financial planners. But when you look at an overall financial strategy, some people might need to use that home equity. And there's multiple strategies that you can use. Let's take a look at wealth by assets. We have retirement accounts of about 34%. Equity in your home is around 30%. So retirement accounts and equity are almost the same. Of course, you have stocks, bonds, mutual funds, cash, and things like that that round up the rest. But when you're looking at a retirement strategy, most people aren't even thinking about equity in their home or it's their last resort. Let's figure out a strategy on how to combine all of these to have a secure retirement. That's today's Financial Focus. All right, let's take a look at wealth. Um, here in the U.S., median U.S. households in 2021, owner, including the home equity, is roughly $400,000. You take out that home equity, what they have liquid is roughly about $158,000. $240,000 on average is the home equity that could be just sitting inside the house. Some people may need to start utilizing this, and there's some strategies on how to do it the most effectively. Let's bring in Big Al to show us the way. All right, creating retirement income, including your home. Many times you hear, don't use your home in your retirement calculations, which is something we say also. However, in certain cases, a lot of people have a lot of equity in their home. So let's talk about how to take advantage of that. Number one, kind of obvious, but you could sell, you could downsize. If you downsize, you're buying something cheaper. You might end up with a lower mortgage or no mortgage, or you might end up with cash in your pocket. Uh, number two, should you think about a refinancing, traditional mortgage option, or maybe, how about if you're over 62, a reverse mortgage? Pros and cons on that, we'll dive into that. And then how about some creative alternatives? So Joe, I can hardly wait to dive into this. I love real estate. So well, you, you look though, I mean, the, someone's primary residence is one of their largest assets. And if they have lived in that house for a very long time, they have built up equity within the overall home. So there's different options that you can utilize if you want to tap into that equity. So let's start here. All right, a lot of you own homes. 45 to 54, 71% of the people in that population own a home. 55 to 64, 75, 65 plus, almost 80% of these individuals have this asset of a primary residence. So is this the last resort? Not necessarily if you have the appropriate strategy and understand the pros and cons of each of your financial moves. I think that's with everything. If you buy a stock, a bond, right, there's pros and cons there. If you tap into the equity, there's pros and cons here. If you understand the risk that you're taking before you get into the strategy and draw it out, I think you can come up with a better solution. So let's talk about downsizing. It's not just dollars and cents. Why would you want to downsize in the first place? Well, first of all, kids are grown. Maybe you don't need as big a home, so that would be number one. Maybe you don't want the stairs anymore. Maybe you got a two-story or three-story. You want a single-story home. As you get older, a little bit tougher to get up and down the stairs. Uh, maybe you want to move closer to family members. Or another one is you don't necessarily want to keep, try, uh, keep care of a yard, right? And all the stuff that goes along with it. Maybe you want a condo so you don't have to worry about any of that. A lot of reasons to consider downsizing but the financial reasons can be pretty helpful. What if you got a mortgage and you downsize to a cheaper home and you can eliminate that mortgage? You don't have a mortgage anymore. How helpful would that be in terms of your retirement income planning? Or maybe you reduce expenses, right? Maybe you've got high property taxes or high maintenance fees or whatever. Maybe you get into a, a smaller home and those, those decrease. And potentially, if you downsize, maybe you end up with some additional cash that you can invest for retirement savings. So all around, it could help you with your retirement income strategy. Looking at expenses of a home, 1% uh, of the market values annual expenses for just upkeep maintenance um, of a home. Have you ever heard of that before? 
It, that could be something like that. So if you, let's say you have a million dollar home, I mean, that's a pretty big check that you're writing each, just for the maintenance and you know everything else that goes on and, just by and, the upkeep of, of that house. Right, and that's probably just keeping the home up. What about new couch, new drapes, new this, new, new that? New siding. It, it adds up. Paint, <laughs> right? All right, now you sell the home. What is that going to do in regards to taxes? Well, there's this 121 tax exclusion for your primary residence. If you're single, you can exclude $250,000 off of that growth of the house, $500,000 if you're married. How do you qualify? You have to live in the primary residence two out of the last five years. If you live in it five years ago for a year and then you rented it for three and you move back in, you can reestablish it as your residence as long as you have two out of the last five years. And of course you have to own it two out of five years as well. How about if I am single and then I get married? How long do I have to be married to take advantage of the full $500,000? It's more on ownership and occupancy. So let's say your future spouse is living with you beforehand. So that, that counts as, as occupancy, but they'd also have to own it two out of five years. So it's not so much if you're married, it's two out of the five years if both of you qualify. Maybe you've only been married at, uh, six months. You could still get the full 500000 if you need more help with this, you know where to go, yourmoneyyourwealth.com. Click on that special offer. It's our retirement readiness guide. We're looking at all sorts of different strategies to get you ready for retirement. Go to yourmoneyyourwealth.com. Click on the special offer. It's our free gift to you. We got to take a short break. We got a lot more to go. We're talking strategies in regards to your overall home. <laughs> 